Over the past year, the Mexican peso has been falling at a faster pace than ever before. A year ago, the peso stood at 12.94 per dollar. Today, it stands at over 21 pesos per dollar. Now, why is this important? Because a stable Mexico politically and economically obviously benefits the United States. Many experts believe that the main reason for the peso fall is the global rise of the U.S. dollar. As you can see from this diagram, Mexico's annual GDP growth has been steadily increasing over the past several years. Since the 2009 economic downturn, Mexico has managed to reach just shy of 3% annual GDP growth versus just about 1% for the rest of Latin America. Dr. Tony Payan, director of the Mexican Center of ba uh, Baker Institute, notes that the currencies rise and fall on supply and demand. So let's take a look at Latin America's emerging markets and where Mexico stacks up. From an investment perspective, the stock markets of these countries are more volatile than the mature markets of developed countries but offer higher returns, thereby making them more attractive as well as riskier. Until the intervention of the country's central Mexican bank uh, was one of the hardest hit currencies in the emerging markets. As a result of the appalling situation in Brazil, economic power in the region has shifted rapidly to Mexico, the second biggest economy in Latin America. Mexico's growth has been hampered by the cash and oil prices, but the economy is growing by around 2% year over year and the economic outlook is positive. Solid domestic economic fundamentals and expectation of a resilient and improving U.S. economy over the next year should help push the Mexican growth towards 2.5%. According to the estimates produced by Focus Economics, which are based on panelists' forecasts, Latin America became poorer in 2016. Considering a population growth rate of 1.1% in the region last year, estimates show that GDP per capita fell for a second consecutive year in 2016 and decreased to levels seen in 2009. The drop reflected the protracted recession in the region. Some potential policy disagreements could take place now that the Trump administration has taken over. There remains widespread doubt about precisely which new direction U.S. trade policy will take under his leadership. Although Republicans control both chambers of the U.S. Congress, there is one part of the Republican Party that is more populist and wants to increase the protection, but there is another part that seems to be more pro-business and pro-free trade. According to experts, Trump's goal is not to punish the U.S. companies that produce goods in Mexico, but reduce American trade deficit with Mexico. The U.S. market accounts for 80% of Mexican imports, which gives the United States lots of leverage to lean on its southern neighbor to buy more American-made products. If the U.S. is an 80% customer of Mexico, would Trump want to completely do away with NAFTA? No, he's going to negotiate, many believe. There will likely be trade wars with Mexico, but rather trade negotiations. About 80% of Mexico's exports go to the U.S., more than 10 times the amount of fellow NAFTA member Canada in 2015, according to data compiled by Bloomberg. Experts believe that the decline in the value of the peso is relative to the U.S. dollar will cause some Mexican companies importing U.S. products to seek out cheaper alternatives. According to the U.S. Consensus Bureau, U.S. exports of goods to Mexico totaled $236 billion in 2015. Recently, it has been a scary situation for the Mexican economy, which has caused protests across the nation and the peso setting record lows falling to just over 21 pesos per dollar. The biggest threat to the health of the Mexican economy, however, remains proposed trade changes that may come with the new Trump administration. There are, there are now very low economic forces pushing the value of the peso downward. As Mexico braces for Trump Act and changes to the new American president will inflict on the country, it is also adjusting to dramatic changes in fuel costs and future fuel policy. With trade restrictions slowing the economy and rising fuel prices, the Mexican economy is going to face a challenging 2017. Unless both the Republican and Democratic parties get together, many of Trump's proposed changes may be catastrophic. So how will America's new president affect global economy? Well, it's not just the abolishing or the renegotiation of the North American Free Trade Agreement with Mexico, but also the main short-term risk to Europe, which seems to be more political rather than economic. And let's not forget the Chinese Trans-Pacific Trans Partnership Agreement. So Donald Trump's victory in the U.S. presidential elections will have implications for the whole global economy. As we discussed, China is one of the most affected by this new uh, Trump administration. China and most of Asia are facing threats of the elimination of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Also, Trump has referred to China as a currency manipulator and is considering imposing a 45% tariff on all Chinese imports into the United States of America. Mexico and China are not the only countries with possible economic implications by the Trump administration. Some of the implications to Europe include the political implications, uh, the Eurozone 
is re extremely reliant on exports. There may be more restrictive U.S. trade regime, and the, the timing for the Trump administration may be devastating to the European nations. There are elections next year in Germany, France, and the Netherlands where parties to the right will be looking to serve the populist tide that carried Trump to his win. There will be a nervousness in the Baltic states of Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia about the possibility that Russia will be emboldened by the Trump apparent isolationism. So will Mexico's devaluation of the peso recover? Will North American free trade agreement survive the Trump administration? Will the Trans-Pacific Partnership survive as well? We are all looking forward to these questions that everyone continues to ask themselves and hopes that we continue to promote free trade across the globe.